August 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ecclesiastes, chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament. For everything there is an appointed time, an appropriate time for every activity on earth, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what was planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give something up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to rip and a time to sew. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What benefit can a worker gain from his toil? I have observed the burden that God has given to people to keep them occupied. God has made everything fit beautifully in its appropriate time. But he has also placed ignorance in the human heart so that people cannot discover what God has ordained from the beginning to the end of their lives. I have concluded that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to enjoy themselves as long as they live, and also that everyone should eat and drink and find enjoyment in all his toil, for these things are a gift from God. I also know that whatever God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing taken away from it. God has made it this way so that men will fear him. Whatever exists now has already been, and whatever will be has already been. For God will seek to do again what has occurred in the past. I saw something else on earth. In the place of justice there was wickedness, and in the place of fairness there was wickedness. I thought to myself, God will judge both the righteous and the wicked. For there is an appropriate time for every activity, and there is a time of judgment for every deed. I also thought to myself, it is for the sake of people, so God can clearly show them that they are like animals. For the fate of humans and the fate of animals are the same. As one dies, so dies the other. Both have the same breath. There is no advantage for humans over animals, for both are fleeting. Both go to the same place, both come from the dust, and to dust both return. Who really knows if the human spirit ascends upward and the animal spirit descends into the earth? So I perceive there is nothing better than for people to enjoy their work, because that is their reward. For who can show them what the future holds? So I again considered all the oppression that continually occurs on earth. This is what I saw. The oppressed were in tears, but no one was comforting them. No one delivers them from the power of their oppressors. So I considered those who are dead and gone more fortunate than those who are still alive. But better than both is the one who has not been born and has not seen the evil things that are done on earth. Then I considered all the skillful work that is done. Surely it is nothing more than competition between one person and another. This also is profitless like chasing the wind. The fool folds his hands and does no work, so he has nothing to eat but his own flesh. Better is one handful with some rest than two hands full of toil in chasing the wind. So I again considered another futile thing on earth. A man who is all alone with no companion. He has no children nor siblings. Yet there is no end to all his toil, and he is never satisfied with riches. He laments, For whom am I toiling and depriving myself of pleasure? This also is futile and a burdensome task. Two people are better than one because they can reap more benefit from their labor. For if they fall, one will help his companion up. But pity the person who falls down and has no one to help him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they can keep each other warm. But how can one person keep warm by himself? Although an assailant may overpower one person, two can withstand him. Moreover, a three-stranded cord is not quickly broken. A poor but wise youth is better than an old and foolish king who no longer knows how to receive advice. For he came out of prison to become king even though he had been born poor in what would become his kingdom. I considered all the living who walk on earth, as well as the successor who would arise in his place. 
There is no end to all the people nor the past generations, yet future generations will not rejoice in him. This also is profitless and like chasing the wind. Be careful what you do when you go to the temple of God. Draw near to listen rather than to offer a sacrifice like fools, for they do not realize that they are doing wrong. Do not be rash with your mouth or hasty in your heart to bring up a matter before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Just as dreams come when there are many cares, so the rash vow of a fool occurs when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in paying it, for God takes no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better for you not to vow than to vow and not pay it. Do not let your mouth cause you to sin and do not tell the priest it was a mistake. Why make God angry at you so that he would destroy the work of your hands? Just as there is futility in many dreams, so also in many words. Therefore, fear God. If you see the extortion of the poor or the perversion of justice and fairness in the government, do not be astonished by the matter, for the high official is watched by a higher official, and there are higher ones over them. The produce of the land is seized by all of them. Even the king is served by the fields. The one who loves money will never be satisfied with money. He who loves wealth will never be satisfied with his income. This also is futile. When someone's prosperity increases, those who consume it also increase. So what does its owner gain except that he gets to see it with his eyes? The sleep of the laborer is pleasant, whether he eats little or much but the wealth of the rich will not allow him to sleep. Here is a misfortune on earth that I have seen, wealth hoarded by its owner to his own misery. Then that wealth was lost through bad luck. Although he fathered a son, he has nothing left to give him. Just as he came forth from his mother's womb naked, will he return as he came, and he will take nothing in his hand that he may carry away from his toil. This is another misfortune. Just as he came, so will he go. What did he gain from toiling for the wind? Surely he ate in darkness every day of his life, and he suffered greatly with sickness and anger. I have seen personally what is the only beneficial and appropriate course of action for people, to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all their hard work on earth during the few days of their life which God has given them, for this is their reward. To every man whom God has given wealth and possessions, he has also given him the ability to eat from them, to receive his reward and to find enjoyment in his toil. These things are the gift of God. For he does not think much about the fleeting days of his life, because God keeps him preoccupied with the joy he derives from his activity. God, the first part of this reading in chapter three, um, many of us who are over the age of 20 <laughs> will recognize this as a, also a very famous song from the birds called Turn, Turn, Turn. And I think one of the things that I love about this first section in chapter three is the intentionality of it. Everything is very specific. Everything is very intentional. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to love, a time to hate. Um, very intentional about these specific things of what we should be doing with our time. And I think the reason that I like the word intentional for this is because so often we get caught up in our life and it's almost like I watch the ocean a lot when I when I go walking in the mornings and it's almost like things that are are lightweight I see them get pushed up to the shore by the water and it's almost like we live our life that way where all these external situations are pushing us around and pushing us towards certain um, directions uh, certain ideas certain ways of doing things as though we don't have much control over our lives and I would say there comes a point in time where we're where a lot of us just give up and we just go with whatever it is and and we settle we settle for jobs we settle for relationships uh, we settle perhaps in our relationship with you nothing is intentional anymore 
it's just kind of go with the flow uh, until our time is done. And there's not really any joy in that. It actually is more fear based than anything because we're choosing not to live life fully. And I think what is interesting is I've had one too many conversations uh, in the last about year with people who've come into my life who are fearful and they're making decisions based upon fear and they're not living their life fully. And here it very clearly says there'll be a time for all of the happy, easy, wonderful things, but there's also going to be time for, for sadness and crying and hurt and pain that that is part of what life is and to live it fully. And Solomon goes on to talk about this. Um, but the peace with you, God, in there is this knowledge that if I live life fully, it is with the understanding and with my eyes on you that you will take care of me. You will protect me because living my life fully, if I choose your will in all of the things I'm doing, I always know that you will take care of me. I always know that you will set my path correctly. It's been really interesting this week um, as I kind of head into a not very good time this week. I'm going through kind of a weird, uh, weird situation, as you know, as we've talked about a lot this past week. And it's, it's not so much a painful time, but it's a time where I need to deal with things and deal with some pretty serious things. And this is not the time where I will be sidetracked with, with dancing and laughing and um, enjoyment. This is my time where I need to be very careful about where I step. I need to constantly check in with you because it's going to be a time for hate. Not hate in the way that the world thinks of hate, but as in righteous hatred, righteous anger. That there's a situation I have to deal with um, that with your will... I need to deal with not from a worldly standpoint but from your standpoint and I know from that point you'll take care of the justice piece of it but it's very intentional I'm ch I check in with you and I take some steps I check in with you I take some steps and it was almost a little bit um, comical tonight there was another step that had to be uh, had to take place and you know checking in with you and lo and behold it ironically was connected to another thing that I was doing and it couldn't have been easier uh, to follow through with the situation I had to handle. I, I totally can see your hand all over the situation, but it's only because I'm very careful in watching where I'm going with this, how I'm handling it. Uh, it is intentional because I know that you're intentional. You don't ever take time off. You don't ever let things just run a kilter. Everything is very intentional with you in our lives. Uh, your path for us is very intentional. Your will for us is very intentional. Your love for us is even very intentional. And if we will pay attention to those timings, we can easily see that in you. It's when we get caught up in this momentum of settling in our life, the momentum of fear, the momentum of anxiousness, the momentum of being worried, that we lose all contact, all sight of how intentional you are in our life, God. So yes, even though this was turned into a famous song, it always reminds me of how intentional you are in our life. That, that it wasn't haphazard that certain things have happened in our life. Very intentionally, you have placed certain things in our life, allowed us to see or hear certain things, experience certain things. Some of them are going to be painful because we need to learn certain things, part of our testimony. Other things are going to be the time to be joyful and to dance and, and um, enjoy the world that you've given us. God, thank you for being so intentional about my life, for loving me so much that you want to be that intimately involved in my life. God, I thank you for everyone who's listening to this video, that you're intentional in their life as well. And if somebody isn't feeling that, if somebody isn't seeing that, God, I just ask that you make it clearer to them today, that they will just take time to talk to you and just say, God, I just, I just don't see you. I just don't see this intentionality that Janelle's referring to from the Bible. And then just show them, show them the, the footsteps that are leading them to you, that relationship with you. 
I know the more I depend on you, the deeper our relationship goes and the more I can see your fingerprints intentionally on everything in my life. God, I thank you for this time. It may not be a time that I enjoy. In fact, I don't enjoy it at all. Um, but I know it's intentionally from you and I know it's a time to deal with things. And sometimes that's we just have to take care of certain things and take responsibilities for certain things. And so I appreciate the fact that you are with me intentionally going through that. And I look forward to the joyful times <laughs> as well. The peaceful times, the times where I get to dance. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>